so we carry on with the second unit of the indian partnership act 1932 in the second unit we have already covered the topic right and liabilities of partners so after covering the rights and liabilities of partners the duties of partners let us now understand what are the authorities of partners what are the different types of authorities that a partner has and what are the restrictions if at all on such authorities let's get started now to understand the authorities or the authority of a partner it is important to understand the meaning of the word authority now what do you mean by authority authority may mean you know power it is the power to do something it is the capability to do something it is the competence to do something okay so authority means the power or the capacity to bind the firm in terms of partnership when i'm talking about the authority of partner what i mean here is the power of the partner the capacity the capability of the partner to bind the firm by his acts now what does this mean when a partner does anything for the business of the firm all his acts which are done for the firm for the business of the firm or for other partners bind whole of the firm for example if a partner purchases goods so that he can you know sell them on behalf of the firm now this act of his this act of purchasing will bind the whole firm tomorrow if this partner does not pay the creditor the firm will have to pay the creditor the other partners will have to pay the creditor so what is the partner doing partner is binding whole of the firm with his act now this is very you know easy to understand that act of a partner will always bind the firm but the important thing here is not all acts of the partner will bind the firm acts with regards to his uh, you know personal things personal decisions they will not bind the firm acts with regards to his moral or religious you know beliefs will not bind the firm only those acts which are related to the firm which are related to the business of the firm will bind the firm otherwise you know acts which are unrelated to the business of the firm unrelated to other partners unrelated to the firm itself which do not bear any connection with the firm such acts will not bind the firm for example if a partner you know through a travel agent books tickets for a holiday now the travel agent has already booked the tickets now this partner but does not pay the travel agent now he was going on a holiday with his family will the firm be bound by his acts no the firm cannot be bound by his act because this act was on account of his personal recreation or you know domestic it, it was a domestic thing it was a family trip so you know the firm cannot be bound by this act so only those acts which are related to the business of the firm in the ordinary course of the business will only bind the firm yet the partner the important thing here to notice that the partner has the power has the authority has the capacity and the capability to bind the firm to bind the other partners by his acts now this authority may be expressed or implied now what do you mean by express authority it is given by agreement or by 
partnership deed express means something which is you know express which is communicated so when the partners communicate with each other they make an agreement with regards to the authorities you know possibly in a firm there are you know there may be four partners and one of the partners has the authority to sell and purchase on behalf of the firm now this authority may be given to him by all the other partners all the other partners i mean all the partners may you know have an agreement with each other that you know a particular partner will only have the authority to buy and sell goods on behalf of the firm now this authority is given to him by other partners by communicating by a you know agreement or maybe you know they put it into writing that is partnership deed so even if it is oral or it is in writing the fact is that it is communicated thus it becomes express so when partners expressly by communication in words or in writing give the authority to a partner to bind the firm by his acts becomes an express authority so what is an implied authority implied authority is an authority which the partner has to bind the firm by his acts which is not communicated to him or agreed by the other partners that does not mean he does not have this authority it is just that there has been no communication in this regard there has been no express agreement in this regard the partners haven't you know sat together and uh, decided that a particular partner will be having the authority to buy and sell goods for a firm it may be implied it may be implied from the conduct of the partners from the behavior of the partners from the action of the partners you know a particular partner is buying and selling goods you know possibly he has a good knowledge about you know the goods he has a good knowledge about how to procure goods you know he has a good knowledge about rates availability etc at the same time he may be a good salesman also so now you know it was understood that this partner will be responsible for sale and purchase and the other partners may do uh, you know uh, accounting and administration job so this is how you know authority is understood and when this authority is understood it is not communicated it is understood from the behavior of the partners from the actions from the conduct of the partners then such authority is said to be implied authority it is said to be implied authority it is not expressed in any agreement or partnership deed yet it is understood the partner knows that i have this authority even though other partners have not told him the other partners know that a particular partner has the authority even though they have not communicated to him such authority is called as implied authority now let us see let us learn more about implied authority what is implied authority when it is given or when it is you know when does a partner have it is when the acts are related to the normal business of the firm when the acts are related to the normal business of the firm this is important now let's say the normal business of the firm is to you know sell shoes purchase and sell shoes trading of shoes so you know the partners may have the authority to purchase shoes and sell them and you know do packing and all those stuffs but will a partner have the authority to buy ice creams instead of shoes will the partner have the authority to purchase cloth instead of shoes do you think he'll have an implied authority 
और ही कैन ओनली परचेज शूज यस इंप्लाइड अथॉरिटी इज ऑलवेज इन रिगार्ड्स टू द नॉर्मल बिजनेस ऑफ द फर्म नॉट you know in regards to something which is not connected to the business of as i said ice cream and shoe business are not connected there's no relation so if a if a partner orders you know let's say 100 bricks of ice creams he possibly does not have the implied authority so it is important to understand that he does not have an express authority if the authority is expressed there is no need for implied authority so now we know that he does not have the express authority other partners have not given him the authority to purchase ice creams okay yet he does assuming that he has implied authority since he is a partner his acts will bind the firm he has the implied authority to purchase ice creams no is ice cream related to shoe business absolutely no it's it's not related to shoe business so the partner here will not have the implied authority to bind the firm by his act by purchasing ice cream so what will happen now you know the firm will not be liable for the act of the partner the partner has purchased ice cream now you know if the partner does not pay to the seller of the ice cream the supplier the firm will not be liable the other partners will not be liable because he cannot bind them he does not have the authority to bind the firm or the partners because the purchases that he has made is not related to the business of the firm now he'll solely be responsible he will be liable only singly the firm will not be liable the partners will not be liable he have to pay to the supplier of the ice cream from his own funds from his own assets so this is the very basic proposition in case of implied authority the partner has implied authority only only if his act is related to the business of the firm it is in the normal course of the business of the firm second act should be in the usual way of carrying on the business act should be in the usual way of carrying on the business you know there may be a case wherein you know even though the act is connected to the business of the firm but it is not in the usual way of carrying on the business now i'll give you an example the usual way of carrying on the business of the firm let's say was you know uh, selling goods on cash on cash basis the firm used to sell goods now there is this partner who says i have implied authority to sell the goods agreed so he sells the goods but what he does is he sells the goods on credit now is selling of goods connected to the business yes it is connected to the business he is adding to the sales of the firm so uh, it's completely related to the normal business of the firm but is it in the usual way of carrying on the business no it is not in the usual way because the firm usually sells the goods generally sells the goods on cash now here the partner has sold the goods on credit tomorrow if the customer defaults or he becomes insolvent and he is not able to pay this partner would have to pay to the firm he will be liable for those goods because he has not acted in the usual way of carrying the business though the act is connected to the business it is not done in the usual way so first the act has to be connected with the business second 
the act has to be in the usual way of carrying on the business third act in firm's name or intention to bind the firm now you know when the partner is selling the goods to somebody you know some customer it is important that he is representing the firm it is important that he is doing the same in the name of the firm he should not be doing in you know it in his uh, personal name in his name for example a b and c are partners in let's say measures a b c and company so when a sells the goods he should sell the goods in the name of measures a b c and company and not by the name of a that is his own name he should be representing the firm you know the customer should know that he is purchasing the goods from the firm and not from you know the individual person a the seller is the firm the seller is not a here so he should be representing the firm he should be acting on behalf of the firm that is very important only when he is acting on behalf of the firm can the firm be bound if he is acting in his personal capacity how can the firm be bound how can the firm be made liable how can the partner the other partners be made liable for the acts that he has done is you know done in his personal capacity that's not possible any acts done in the personal capacity cannot have a binding on the firm so it is important for the partner to represent the firm you know do the acts in the name of the firm only then the firm will be bound by his acts okay so this was about implied authority now another important point to understand about implied authority is no implied authority beyond the scope of partnership no implied authority is limited till the scope of partnership till the uh, you know activities which the partnership does till the activities which the partnership is allowed to do now as i said you know the partnership is in the business of trading of shoes now the scope of partnership is shoes only to trade in shoes we cannot tomorrow you know on the behalf of firm trade in rubber so that is beyond the scope of partnership now if you are you know, let's say a partner in a small time trading firm which has uh you know let's say a turnover of 10 lakhs now tomorrow if you borrow 10 crores for the firm that will be beyond the scope of the firm because the firm does not require that much money so you have gone beyond the scope of the firm okay so all the acts which are within the scope of the firm can bind the firm if they are ultra wires the scope of the firm the firm cannot be bound last point no implied authority beyond the normal course of business we've already discussed this point not it should not be beyond the normal course of business the partner should not go out of the way out of the way of the normal business of the firm so it should be within the limit within the normal course of business of the firm only then the implied authority is available with the partner only then can he bind the firm 